the transition of the Ice Age environment of the Pleistocene era to the more temperate environment of the Holocene era caused dramatic changes in the landscape, flora, and fauna of North America. Closed canopy forests spread across the landscape, providing new food resource opportunities for ancient Native Americans. Other food resources disappeared with the going of the Pleistocene, such as the megafauna. As a result, people diversified their diet over time, exploiting a broad range of plant and animal foods, depending less on big game hunting than they had before. Archaeologists use these and other broad cultural changes to mark the boundary between the Paleo-Indian and Archaic periods. The hunter-gatherers of the early Archaic came to master the new resources that had become available in the forests that now covered the Midwest of North America. One of the earlier tool technologies that was developed in the early Archaic were side notch projectile points. Side notches are a hafting strategy that is distinct from the lancelet points of earlier Dalton and Paleo Indian peoples. Gram K projectile points are one of these early Archaic side notch styles. Gram cave components are dated to a range of calibrated 8600 to 8200 radiocarbon years before present. In this video, I flint up an example of a gram cave point and discuss the adaptations early archaic people developed in order to thrive in the Holocene environment. Gram cave projectile points are medium to large bifaces with narrow blades notched from the sides. They tend to have a deep, concave basal area that extends to the edges of the blade, leaving pointed, downward projecting ears. This basal area is ground heavily, leaving the edge here quite dull. The edges of the blade will often exhibit fine serrations. On resharpened examples of gram cave points, the edges are alternately beveled and display the serrations more clearly. Pristine, unresharpened examples of these blades are not beveled. The notches on this point are not very deep and can range from being more open than they are deep to fairly narrow. Gram cave points would have served as multi-purpose tools to the people who made and used them. Beveling is indicative of resharpening from use as knives. Unbeveled examples of gram cave points have been found with distal impact fractures, indicating use as projectiles. It seems early archaic peoples used this style for both cutting and hunting implements. Any individual point may have been transitioned from one function to another over the tool's use life. Depending on how the points are hafted, gram cave points may function as both tools simultaneously. Gram cave points are one of a group of very early archaic side notch forms. Kessel, Big Sandy, and Cache River are other side notch point styles from this period of the early archaic. Likely these are all just variations on a theme that different groups of people manufactured that varied slightly over time and region, before they were replaced by markedly different projectile point patterns. These side notch points were often made from local or regionally available lithic resources, but occasionally were made from extra local lithics as well. Large, bat, flake knives, and scrapers have been recovered in association with Gram Cave points. Unmodified flakes would have been utilized as expedient tools as well. Flintknap adzes are suspected to be part of their toolkit as with other early archaic groups, such as the Dalton and Thebes, but have not been recovered in association with Gram Cave projectile points.
Early arcade peoples were mobile hunter-gatherers who moved residentially to exploit the availability of food resources and seasonal weather patterns. Graham Cave Horizons are found at a number of open-air sites and sites in rock shelters and caves. The Graham Cave site itself is one of the more famous of these. Modoc Rock Shelter is another famous site that has a Graham Cave component. While archaeologists do find fire hearths at Graham Cave components, there's a lack of features, to my knowledge, showing structures as such as dwellings at these sites. It's entirely possible that these people were too mobile to build substantial housing, making fairly ephemeral structures that didn't leave post holes for archaeologists to find. Large amounts of charcoal, substantial tool deposits, and heavy food processing tools suggest that earlier cave peoples were returning to these locations on a regular basis. Likely, these people had a yearly round and moved back and forth to the same locations time and again. Early archaic peoples predate the invention of pottery in North America. They used hot rock cooking methods instead. Stones were heated in hearths, then used to heat food. These hot rocks can be used for a number of different cooking methods, like baking, searing, and even for boiling when placed in a water-filled container. Over repeated heatings, this rock crumbles and breaks apart, and is then discarded. Archaeologists call this fire-cracked rock, or FCR, when they encounter it in the archaeological record. Graham cave points were manufactured from raw chert. Heat treating was used more commonly later in the archaic period. Early archaic people tended to select choice, high-grade cherts of locally available materials. Graham cave points occur in the archaeological records of Missouri and Illinois, and the surrounding states to a lesser degree. One of the most prominent cherts that was used to manufacture these points was Burlington chert. This is the material that I'm flint napping. This is the material I'm flint napping my Graham cave point from, although this piece was heat treated as I liked raw Burlington chert at the time. Ozark cherts would have also been an important lithic resource for the people living in that region of Missouri. Occasionally, extra local lithics, such as Hickston quartzite from Wisconsin, were used for making Graham cave points but shirts local to the Missouri and Illinois regions were used far more frequently. Nut-bearing trees were an important food resource for early archaic peoples. Nut trees would have been reliable for people to locate on the landscape since they had a habitat preference. Black walnut, acorn, pecan, butternut, and hickory were all nuts gathered and eaten by early archaic peoples. Hickory nuts became more important later in the archaic period, as their distribution on the landscape lagged to claim the Midwest landscape in the early Holocene in comparison to other nut trees, which spread out far more quickly in the post-Pleistocene era. Other floral remains are scarce at earlier cake sites, due to the old age playing a role in the preservation of plant organics. The seeds of fleshy fruits, such as grape, sumac, and persimmon, have been found at some earlier cake sites. The presence of these fleshy plant food resources at sites probably reflects seasonal use, as there isn't evidence of long-term storage of these foods. Nuts, on the other hand, were stored long term. 
sites like Coster and Cloud Spitter have large storage pits which contain abundant burned nutshell fragments, which indicate that the people here were processing them for their edible meats and oils. Nut crops would have been one of the most predictable and storable food resources for early archaic peoples. Ground stone tools would have been invaluable for processing plant foods like nuts. Ground stone tools are manufactured from igneous and metamorphic rock that doesn't tend to fracture suitably for flint napping. Instead, a harder stone is used to peck away grains of the rock into shape, then coarse stone is used to grind it smooth. Ground stone tools that were made for processing plant foods in the early archaic include the mono and matate, mortar and pestle, and pitted stones used for cracking nutshells. Large, heavy tools like the mano and matate weighed too much for them to be easily transported. The presence of tools like these indicate that people were invested in the locations where they used ground stone. It seems that they returned to the exact locations where they processed tree nuts and stored their ground stone tools. Early archaic peoples hunted a broad spectrum of animals. It is likely that they hunted game using the atlatl and dart. However, there isn't direct evidence of atlatls in Gram Cave components, likely due to the lack of preservation. We do know that earlier and later Paleo-Indian and early archaic peoples were using the atlatl, so it's safe to say that the people who made and used Gram Cave points did too. Based on faunal remains at sites from this period, archaeologists know that white-tailed deer were important for food, as well as other mammals like squirrel, raccoon, woodchuck, and opossum. Large animals like elk and black bear would have been around during this time, but are rarely present in early archaic assemblages, and other assemblages in general in the Midwest. It may have been that these animals were less abundant in prehistory. Animals such as elk may have only been abundant in specific locales, where this is also reflected in the archaeological records here. Small herds of bison were present in the Midwest during the early archaic period, but not as abundantly as they were in the late prehistoric and further to the west on the Great Plains. Aquatic creatures, like mussels, fish, turtles, and waterfowl, were important protein sources as well. The species and size variation of fish bones in early archaic assemblages suggest that these people were using non-selective fishing technologies. These include nets, traps, or poison. Paleo-Indian peoples did not exploit as much medium or small game as early archaic people did. Early archaic people also made use of far more aquatic resources than Paleo-Indian people did. This broad spectrum adaptation allowed early archaic peoples to cope with food shortages when one food resource became temporarily unavailable or less productive. There are a number of burials dating to the early archaic across the American mid-continent. One site, the Coster site located in Illinois, has several burials from the same time as Grand Cave Points. At Coster in Horizon 11, the same component where Grand Cave Points were found, the skeletal remains of nine humans were recovered by archaeological excavators. These individuals include five adults and four infants. The infants were placed in shallow graves on their side, with no grave goods. Of the adults, there are two females, two males, and an individual whose sex could not be determined. The bodies of these adults were flexed and placed in burial pits that were circular to ovicular in shape, 
with relatively straight sides. Only one grave good was placed with the adults, on the chest of one of the males. This artifact is a cylinder of antler with holes drilled into it, and small pieces of antler pounded into the pithy core on the main piece. This odd object is unlikely to be a tool, but it is unknown what it meant or represented to the people who buried it with one of their deceased. Most of the burials occur outside of the area where human artifacts and activities occurred in Horizon 11, but two were buried within this space. Curiously, this horizon also contains the remains of dogs buried in graves. There's no evidence of butchery on these bones, so these dogs weren't used as a food source. The dogs were buried in prepared graves, with articulated and nearly complete skeletons. This special treatment, very similar to the way that people were buried here, suggests that these dogs were considered community members by the earlier archaic people who lived here. Once I finished flaking my point, I used a small piece of an abrader to dull the notches and the base, just like early arcade peoples did for making gram cave points. This dulling prevents the lashings which hefted the point to a handle or a shaft from being cut or frayed. <laughs> 